Oh my, I gotta make a call. Hey, Steve's calling. Hey, go ahead, Steve. Hey, Chopstick. Yeah, it's Chopstick. Hey, I was just reading. Did, did you read the news? I cannot believe the stuff that I'm hearing about in this. We gotta tell everybody. Yeah, let's get together and talk about it. There's only one thing that we love more than eating food with chopsticks, and that's photography. A little bit different than our normal type of show. We're just going to do some news. There's been a lot of new news lately. A lot of big news. Out. That's why I got big. the big chopsticks today, because we got big news. Big, big news. But actually some really cool, exciting stuff that I think... Uh, is interesting for anybody, no matter what kind of gear you use, okay. um, but just some new stuff in the industry. And the first thing that's been kind of the talk of the town was from Nikon, actually. Uh, yeah, it's nice to hear some some good news coming is. out of Nikon. <laughs> Nikon. Now, we're both Nikon users that has had kind of some big struggles they have. lately um, with some gear and just recalls and that kind of thing. It's maybe put a bad taste in people's mouths, but they made some exciting announcements this week um, about the D850. Yes. Which is the replacement to the camera that I use as a D810. Yeah. Which is still rumors. I mean, it, they, they've said it's coming out, but right. there's rumors of what's actually in this camera. Now, a lot of these rumors, like Petapixel just had a <laughs> bunch of stuff about it. Um, a lot of these rumors, the people that have given these rumors before about the gear have been right. Have been right. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that they say is that this camera is going to be a, like a 45 to 48 megapixel camera. Yeah, so you're shooting an 810 right now, which is 46, yeah, uh, 36, 36 megapixels. Yeah, like when those files are huge. They're huge. So that's the one thing that kind of scares me a little bit is just the fact yeah. that these files are going to be massive. Because as we get bigger, we tend to lose low light capability. But... The announcement is, is that it's improved low light over the A10. Yeah. So, so what, that's pretty amazing. It is. And what they're saying is that this is kind of going to kind of be a, a junior D5. So the D5 is, is Nikon's top of the line professional kind of sports yeah. catch-all camera. Very expensive camera. But this is supposedly going to be like a mini junior D5. It's got the focusing system from the D5, which is, which is the amazing. best in the world. Yeah. I mean, yeah. hands down, there's not a better focus system yeah. than no, that. No, I, I just spoke to uh, somebody who is the the world's best rodeo photographer. And he was just raving over the fact he had two D5s. And he's like, I cannot take a bad picture because this focus system works so good. Yeah. Better than anything. He's like, I would switch to Canon in a heartbeat, but this focus system's too good to switch. Now, here, here speaking of sports, yeah. this is the amazing thing about this camera. This is 46, just call it 46 megapixels just for kicks. Yeah. 46 megapixels. They're saying it's gonna be 10 frames per second in the shoot rate. Which just blows me away. Exactly, like, yeah, that's huge. Those files. Now the dangerous part is you're going to fill up a 64 gigabyte card like that if you sit on that shutter. I exactly. mean, it's going to go fast. But to be able to capture that kind of detail with that kind of focusing with that kind of speed is unheard yeah. of. I think a lot of people don't know this too. Is there is in a lot of their high end cameras now they have moved away. They haven't moved away, but you have the uh, the SD card. But you also have the uh, the XQD, XQD card. card, which is so much faster. Yeah, so I, I used to shoot with a D4 before it uh, took a swim. Took a swim, but that had the the XQD cards, which are unbelievably fast as far as write speed yeah. and read speed. So it's going to have the SD card plus that. Uh, some of the other things that I was looking at here on the computer about it, uh, it's got 4K UHD video in yeah. full frame, which is going to be great. 120 frames per second slow motion. Yeah. So it's going to have true slow motion capability. Well, is it, is it the 850 they've been talking about rumors of like the 8K or 6K? Well, it's going to be 8K um, at 30 like, frames. Yeah, right? it's like it's a 8K time lapse. That's what they were, okay. they were talking about. Which is crazy. Which is going to be crazy. So if you do any kind of that star photography stuff that we did on a show a few weeks back, it's going to have all that capability. So yeah. it's going to be pretty amazing. The other thing that I thought was really cool, it's got improved battery life. My, my A10's actually got pretty decent battery it life. Does. but more battery is better. Um, here's the other thing. It's got a improved, totally silent shooting mode. No way. So if you ever shoot with Nikon, you notice it's, and I'm not saying it sounds like a cannon, but it sounds like a <laughs> cannon, right? Yeah. Like, like a, it's a gun going Oh, off. man, it's, yeah. it's loud. Now, the A10 actually has a pretty quiet shutter. It does. But yeah. if they go completely silent, it would be... That's pretty amazing um, to great. think that they can do that. So. so you guys that have been shooting Canon like 5D Mark, from the 5D Mark II on up, 
you've had a very quiet shutter in the silent mode, which has been great for weddings and that kind of thing. Yeah. Us in the Canon, in the Nikon world, haven't been so lucky. Yeah, exactly. So uh, two of the other things I, th I thought was really really cool. One was the uh, but, but, but tiltable screen. It's got a tiltable LCD yes, screen. which like is one of the reason we love the 750 yeah. is that tiltable which screen. Which has been great. And the other thing, it's got built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Nice. So you can fire right to your yeah. cell phone. I've always been jealous the last couple of years. I have an A7, but of Sony shooters. I, I'm just so jealous the way they can get their stuff right to social media. Yeah, we, we have one way. of the guys that comes to our workshops all the time. He's got an AR7 too. Yep. Um, and he's just constantly shooting like, check out my picture. You watch around this iPad, right? Check out my yeah, picture. I exactly. just took, and it looks great right out of the camera too. Yeah. So pretty fun. And we're so, pretty jealous of that. So yeah. Hey, it looks like that's coming. So exciting news! It's going to be probably they say right under four thousand dollars. So it's not a cheap body, but uh, man, it's going to be. But still, it, it's a it's a huge step up. Probably going to be best in class, yeah. I think. Yeah. You know that that eight ten's got that beautiful sensor, and if they're going to improve that sensor beyond so, what it's at now, Nikon. If you're listening to this, there's two guys that would be very happy to. Maybe test this camera that's for a right. year. We are looking. <laughs> we, we are looking for, forward to seeing that camera. So, so that's good news. Uh, maybe something interesting on the the Canon. Yeah. Part. So you know, a lot of people. Uh, when we talked about uh, Nikon. There's a lot of Canon rumors out there right yeah. now. One of the rumors that just came out um, hasn't been, you know, uh, um, obviously saying it's true, but it, good sources saying that Canon is actually looking into a professional DSR DSLR mirrorless. And it's kind of funny because a lot of people are going, why hasn't Nikon, why hasn't Canon yeah. jumped in to I've the wondered. mirrorless market? Me too. Well, I finally dove into it this week and found maybe the answer of why that is. So what makes Canon right now so much better than Sony? And I use those words loosely because people are going to argue, well, here, this is better, that's better. But as a company, it is the breadth of of lenses in they their do, line. They, I, I, they have, and thing, same yeah, with Nikon, you know, and that's the reason we're Nikon shooters. Lenses. We own Nikon lenses. It's very difficult to go, I'm gonna abandon one brand for another yeah. and replace all the lenses that I own. That's a huge investment. So, um, but Canon, they've had such amazing lenses, so has Nikon. When you take a mirrorless camera, you are physically making that camera narrower. Mm -hmm. And so when you mount your lens onto that, that body, you are now closer to the sensor. Yep. Those are mathematically equated to find out how long it should be. For instance, like the uh, Canon, it's like 44 millimeters from sensor to lens. The Sony is 18 millimeters. So, okay, so here's what the problem is. Right? It's a distance issue. So Canon, if they come up with this new line, they're going to have to come up with a whole new line of lenses, which is very, wouldn't be a smart move for them to do because they have such great lenses. Or they have to physically make a new mount so it will accept the new mm -hmm. lenses and physically be able to move them closer to that sensor. So there's issues going on. They said end of fourth quarter 2018. So if you can hold on, if you're in the market for a mirrorless camera, there, there's great So it's not stuff a technology issue. It's, it's an actual physical It's a physical issue. issue uh, and, and that's why both of those people, that's interesting. those groups are not, you know, jump both feet into the pool of no. mirrorless cameras. No, really interesting. That's that's cool. It is. But even with that news, Nikon, they've announced that they're going to jump into that professional yep. DSLR market for a mirrorless. So excited to hear rumors about that yep. more. It's good stuff. Now, not to leave Sony totally out in the cold here. Right. Tell us about some things you were so talking to me about. So there's been some news on the Sony front, and this, this is an amazing statistic to yes. me. Sony now owns... 50% of the image sensor, I can't see, <laughs> image <laughs> sensor market, market yeah. in the world. 50% yeah. of the cameras, whether it's a smartphone to a yeah. DSLR. The big jump has become because of the twin lenses in cell phones yeah, now. Yeah, so cell phone, they, they make most of the sensors for the twin lens cell phones. So when you have those two different lenses yep. on there, not just the front back, but the two lenses side by side, those are Sony sensors. Yeah. Now, Sony, it has made an incredible profit this quarter with that that sensor yeah. market. Now Best they, profit in, in two decades. Two decades, 20, 20 years. Yeah. So they went from a company five years ago that had lost, what was it, they have it right here, 1.43 billion. No, they, they lost $2.9 billion in a year, Yeah. right? This quarter alone, they've made in profit $1.43 billion. Yeah. 
what, in a, a quarter. In a quarter, yeah. Right? And that really has to do with just the image sensor. In fact, they, they kind of spawned off a whole new company that's their, just their yeah. sensor company. A lot of people don't know, I mean, some of you know it, it's all the Nikon sensors or yeah. Sony. Um, DJI, all of your drones and Go things. Pro. GoPros. They're all using the same Sony sensors in these things. So Sony is ruling the world when it comes to they image are. sensors. They are. Now, the interesting thing, this I don't want to get too techy about the whole financial things, but they've actually lowered their revenue rating by 2.9% this year because they say the Chinese market for those dual camera cell phones has, the, the Chinese people are, or Chinese companies, I should say, are looking at cheaper alternatives. Yes. The, the Sony is not necessarily cheap. So they're just kind of going, ooh, there might what, be a what shift can I, away What can from I copy us? and make, you yeah, know, yeah. make cheaper? But. So they're getting ahead of the curve, which I like that. Yep. So, so that, I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. It was 50% of the market, you know, yeah. They, they they came back from the brink of disaster to really dominating the, dominating the world. Exactly. But, so there's our camera news. Yep. We're excited about this last one. Yeah. You know, we've been holding this like under wraps. We've been participating for the last month with a brand new product. A secret project. One of our sponsors, Interfit. Yep. Yeah. And well, one month ago, they sent us, before they were released, they... Honey badgers. badgers. They, and you know, they're made for the fearless. They are. <laughs> so some of you might have seen our unboxing video last week that we put up of the honey badgers. We've been having fun playing with those. Yes. Um, our S1 users, you know, guys, you know we're, we're ambassadors for these S1s. We love these these things. These are not a replacement well, for the it's, S1. It's funny because we we had a ton of people like after that that video yeah, was going released, like, should I should hold I, on? Well, yeah, why did I? Why did you say that those are the best lights in the world? Which yeah. I truly believe they are. But why? You know why? Yeah. Should I wait it until these new honey badgers? No, they're different. They're for a different market. They're for a different market. They're a different solution. These yep. these are. I don't want to use the word a lower end. They they just they're more limiting than the S ones. Yeah. But if you are a you know, uh, senior portrait photographer, you're someone that's getting into photography, you want to put up a home studio, Great honey badgers bad. are the answer for you yep. with that situation. These are very, these are workhorse lights. So a lot of you are familiar with alien bees. Yep. You know, it's kind of the, the go-to light, right? For any any starting photographers going with alien bees. Yep. And then they came out with a new- We used them for years. Digi we were alien yep. bee users and suggested it to a lot of people. Then they came out with the new digi bees, which yep. was their, their Which has been all solution, the buzz. Right? The buzz, yeah. yes. It's been the Digibees. Everybody's going, you need the Digibees, you need the Digibees. Well, when I first heard of them, my first thought was, man, it's gone all LED. Because everybody kept saying, have you seen those LED? Well, right. it's a modeling light that's LED. And the modeling light is simply what you can turn on to see what What's your going flash on. is going to You still have a flash tube in that yeah. thing. But it was a nice uh, uh, step up for Alien B. Mm -hmm. These honey badgers, you're, you're going to find very similar specs to the Digibees with a couple exceptions where I think they've done some things better, better than the DigiB. You know, this thing, it's coming complete in a box with a soft box. Yep. I mean, it's pretty unbelievable that you actually get a soft box. So if you're new to it, um, I'm not a huge fan of that soft box. It works. It works it's, really it's good. It's a weapon. It's a weapon. And when we say that, when, if, if you ever have a chance to work with the DigiB or, or get one yourself, be very careful unpacking this this foldable yeah. softbox it's it works it works like one of those <laughs> things that you'd put across your windshield you know for the car or, or a reflector right but this thing is so tight spring loaded yeah. that the first time we did it it flew like 30 feet across just, which oh. bring, and there it yeah. goes it but what an amazing this has been an amazing product it is so it has it yeah, is, still yeah. is. <laughs> instead of us just talking about it yep let us show them yeah. What we did with it. So we, we did a little fun project uh, a week ago. We've done a, a few of them that we'll be showing you over the few weeks. But this one was one that we did. And uh, let's just take a, take a quick little photo walk and show you how we put it into practice. This is Mark, the other Chopstick guy, and tonight was our second night to play with the Honey Badger lights by Interfit. It was my first time to actually shoot with these lights, and I was sure impressed with how well they work. So tonight, my idea was to really push these lights. I wanted to see how well they would perform, so we went out while the sun was still straight up. We met up with our friend Allison, who is an avid uh, sportswoman, and she loves to hunt and fish and, and 
play in the outdoors. So we thought, what a great opportunity to really try out these lights by taking her out to a lake up in the mountains and let's get some shots of her fly fishing. So for our first shot, we actually put these lights right out in the water. So one of the things I like right away with these lights is the fact that they're very compact and lightweight. When we use a lot of our large mono lights, it requires us bringing out sandbags so we can sandbag our lights so they're not going to fall over. These were so lightweight that I really had no fear that they were going to tip over in the water. So after getting a few great shots of Allison, we decided one of the things that it was lacking was some backlight. So we pulled out another honey badger light and we placed that behind her with just the bare bulb so that we actually could get a little separation from the background. We were really impressed with uh, how well these things did, especially, gotta remember, we're shooting this in the bright sunlight. One of the great things about using these lights is the fact that we can control everything right there on camera. So the sun was still very high in the sky and we decided to move out of the water and we decided to get some pictures of her. So we tried to find a little bit of shade for her to sit down in and I think these lights performed uh, amazingly. So finally, the sun went down enough so that we actually can get some backlighting on her. It was a beautiful spot where we saw some trees that were being backlit and they were just glowing. So we moved her into position and started to make some just beautiful dreamy looking photos. We would say these probably are very comparable to like the Alien Bee Digibee light. But here's one of the big advantages. Number one, they're about 50 bucks cheaper. Number two, the controller system is like $79. If you want to control your lights remotely with the uh, Alien B Digibees, you're going to pay somewhere around $210 by the time you buy the receiver and the actual controller that can control the power of these lights. We realized the sun was going down rather quickly, so we decided to do one last shot. We took her into an area that had a fire go through it a few years ago, so it was very open and we could see Mount Lassen in the background. One of the problems was to get Mount Lassen the sun was setting and the light was right in her face. So what we did is we scrimmed her face off a little bit so she actually could open her eyes and look into the camera. And then we overpowered that sunlight with the Honey Badger light. It did a fantastic job. So here's my impression of this light. At $299, you can't go wrong. If you do not need high speed sync, this is incredible value. 320 watt seconds. You have the uh, modeling lamp on there that's LED that is very, very bright so you can use it as a video light. It even comes with a soft box. So you just can't beat that value. If the receiver is built in to this unit. If you're like me and you're shooting the uh, Interfit S1s, which is their larger mono light, the controller for that will also control these lights. So this is just an incredible value all the way around and it performed uh, great for us tonight. Fortunate questions. It's that time again. It is. And it might be the time when I decided I took the wrong chopsticks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can do the pass. Okay. With the extra large. Oh, that was, that was too easy to do. That was stellar. What do we got? What do we got? All right. So we're going to open up here and we're going to see what we have. I'm getting better at opening are, this the right way so that I can read it. And all right. This is from Dakofti. <laughs> that must Sorry. be like a screen <laughs> name. Like, it's from Fallon, Nevada. Okay. I've been to Fallon. You've been to Fallon? I have. It's kind of out there, a little outside of Reno there. It's where all the Dakotis live. Yeah, it says, most of my clients want to shoot in the middle of the day. <laughs> How do you handle that? <laughs> Fire them? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> to find different clients. You're fired. Remember the old apprentice, yes. <laughs> yes. You're fired. <laughs> You're fired. Can't find some new clients. So, yeah, there you go. There's your answer. Don't work with those people. That's it. All right, thanks for, you can always send in your no. <laughs> <laughs> that is a common thing that, we all go it through as happens. photographers. Yeah, so what time can we meet? 12 noon. Yeah. When's the wedding scheduled? 12 for? noon. 12. Yeah. How about that senior shoot? 12, 12 noon. noon. Family yeah. shoot? 12 noon. But I, shoot. my favorite is noon. this, though, is the, oh, yeah, we can do that in the evening. So what time would you like us to meet? Yeah, we can meet there at 5. And then when they show up, what do they say? You know, sunsets at like 7.30, and they'll, they'll come at 5 and go, oh, 
Well, we have to be at a dinner yeah, by 6.15. Six, yeah. So can we be done quickly? Clear, yeah. You're here for the evening. All right. So to answer their question. Here's the answer. You need to... Uh, I wouldn't have given you this answer six months ago. I think I You need to saying. invest in... You know, and it's not us selling those lights. We love selling the lights and talking about these lights, like our S1s that we're using. Yep. High speed sync. High speed sync is the answer. No matter, no matter it what extends brand your day using, yeah. by like 10 or 12 hours. You can shoot in midday sun. We were just helping somebody who doing a private lesson yep. at their home. We went in the back of her house and we made her put the model that she hired to when we were teaching the lesson in the brightest sun where, I mean, yeah. it was splotchy light all over the face. And it was 12 noon. And it was 12 noon. Yep. We turned the lights on with the high speed sync and said, we're gonna show you how you can overpower the sun and make a perfect portrait in this you, horrible light. Do you remember her expression when she looked at the back of her camera? Yeah. It was, I can't I believe, believe it. it. Yeah. <laughs> like she has never ever, and she's got beautiful equipment. I mean, I'll, she's got great stuff. Yeah. She's like, I have never, ever been able to take a picture like yeah. that. And this was just her, we were kind of goofing around. It wasn't like we were doing a big fashion shoot. No, no. But like you say, high speed sync. That's the answer. That's the answer. Now, do you want to shoot at 12 noon? No. Nope. No. Can you shoot at noon, 12 noon? Absolutely. Yeah. Now your on-camera flash can do high speed sync yep. in most cases. Yep. I mean, if it's a Canon or Nikon, yeah. one of the newer ones it can. But your, your flash has to be on camera. Yeah. But if you We've get... So we've done some segments on high-speed sync, and, yeah. and maybe we'll do another one coming up sometime so soon. Sick. But one of the things that a lot of people need to remember with high-speed sync is the fact that I can shoot at high noon. It's not the fact that, oh, I can make a portrait and overpower the sun. I can make that portrait shooting it at 2.8 yeah. with wide flash, open. wide open. So that is the beauty of high-speed sync. So Great question. Yeah. Well, what was the name? <laughs> that was yeah. Kofti. Kofti. Kofti or Kofti. Or do Dofti. Do I or... really have to open it up again? There we go. It's Kofti from Fallon. Okay. But I actually think that's a screen name. It's so, uh, I don't really think. It could be somebody's real name. So anyways, as Kofti did, please send in your questions every week. You can yes. even enter them right down below in the comment section. And every week we will have our intern, Jack, stuff them into a fortune cookie for us to read. Yep. All right. Oi! Talking raw! Talking raw. All right, so today we're not actually going to dig into anything for our talking raw. I'm not going to pull anything on Photoshop. I know. <laughs> but in the vein of the news, yep. what's what's our big talking raw news? What's, dun, dun. Um, yeah. Nick is dead. Yes. You know, a couple weeks ago that story broke. I mean, we've known the rumors of it. If you don't know what Nick is, Nick Filters, they yes. were accompanied by Nick Software. It was actually bought by Google a few years. It kind of became an industry standard in post-processing. Yeah. Just being able to put some We both filters. use it. Oh, that's great. On every one of our images. So oh, Google just it. announced that they're killing it. Yeah. They're no longer supporting it, yep. which it is dead. caused kind of panic it did. in the photography world. Yeah. Which immediately people said, is somebody going to buy it and, and revive this thing? No, mm -hmm. it's, dead. it's dead. Google said, it is gone. No one will revive this thing. It's nope. gone. It's but, over. It's finished. Yep. But, Nothing. We have been working with some standalone products yep. and some some uh, plugins for Photoshop that we think and are Lightroom. both incredible alternatives to not only can be for Photoshop yep. itself, but also replacing Nick. And we want to talk about those over the next few yeah, weeks. Yeah, so we've been playing around with them, um, and we, we have a lot more playing around to do. I mean, it's yeah. just kind of in the entry stage to see if they are viable alternatives. And I think I think we found some that... that, that it kind of fit our yeah. workflow already. Um, but we'll be coming at, coming up with some great solutions for you guys over the next few weeks, so keep your eyes out. But yeah. uh, we just want to kind of mention that maybe as a little teaser of what's up to come, what's okay. to come up. I can't talk today. It is. So, but hey. Great news show today. Yeah. So let's talk about some food, food for, for thought. thought at the end of the show. All right. So what do we got? Uh, interesting news. Yeah. A lot of interesting news. I don't think it's time to have a yard sale and sell all your no, stuff. No, no. Um, there's plenty of time. There's no panic over what's going on in the photo industry. I think it's an interesting time of the year, though, that, that like, it's almost early. You know, a lot of times yeah. manufacturers will announce stuff, um, you know, in the beginning of the year is when, frame, yeah, right? it's when things are being launched. Right, and, yeah, so they, they so. usually announce them at these yeah. shows, but they're announcing stuff kind of early, early this year, so some exciting yeah. things. I, I'm excited about it. Yeah. You know, I don't know that I'm going to get an 850 just because... I'm so poor, but, yeah, <laughs> but exactly. uh, you know, it's an expensive camera, but and my camera's working fine. Yep. So maybe I need to dunk it in a lake or something, but <laughs> um, no, but I, I get excited just because I think we'll have some opportunities to play with it. Yeah, I agree. And use it. But 
yeah, I thought overall great show, just fun. You know, if, if you guys like this kind of thing, go ahead and again comment below if you like to hear some of the latest news. We try to do research. That's like we say, we live, eat, breathe, sleep, photography, yes. and, uh, and sushi. All right. And All until right. next time, we ask you to like and subscribe. And don't forget to what? Ring the bell. Ding. Ring the bell. Allows you to be uh, notified every time that a new video gets posted there on YouTube. So we thank you so much for all your support. We thank you for joining us again on another episode of the Panoptic Chopstick Show. And like always, we want to say, say, say sushi. sushi. All right, have a great week, everybody. We want to welcome you to our YouTube channel. That's right, the Panoptic Chopstick Channel, where we are bringing fun to photography. Hey, we want to invite you each week to join us on Tuesday, where we put out a new episode of our Panoptic Chopstick Show, where we will give you tips, tricks, interviews with photographers, we'll give you DIY projects to do on your own, and maybe even inspire you a bit. That's right, including always a little dash of fun. So we want to invite you to go ahead and subscribe and like our channel, where you will get notified every Tuesday of brand new episodes. But welcome to the Panoptic Chopsticks channel. Come join the fun.